All right, Dr. Rob, got a question for you today. All What's right. it like doing your first full arch case? Wow. So first full arch case. Let me go back in time to my first full arch case. So when I did my very first full arch case, I did it within sequence. And this is way back in the day when the, uh, one, of the, one of the two developers of the product, Daniel, was still with the company. It was a, a terribly exciting um, because we, we got this basically shoebox size box of components that came in uh, days, days and days and days before the surgery. And um, we had planned the whole case digitally. So we had uh, numerous components. When you first do one of these cases, there's just like all these parts. And what we did was we, we opened it up and we actually read the instructions that come with it. And I, and I joke about that because in my course, when we teach full mouth, we say, when you get the box, open it up and read the instructions before the day of the surgery. And the reason is, is that sometimes when you're reading those instructions, you'll realize you don't have a tool or a component or a part that you're supposed to have, that you're supposed to bring to the game. And so you say, okay, always bring that stuff, uh, open the box and read that, uh, uh, open it and read it early. Um, so we did that. And then what I did is in the privacy of my office with a, with a, uh, a nice cup of Nespresso coffee, I put all the parts together and took it apart and put it together and took it apart. And I visualized the entire surgery in my mind. So before I even went in, I had done the surgery in my mind multiple times. I knew every part where it was gonna go and how it needed to go together. Now this was a number of years ago, so this was prior to uh, NDX procuring or purchasing in sequence. When they purchased in sequence, they also brought um, trainers. So nowadays, if you're doing your first case, you can actually have a trainer come in from NDX, who's trained, who knows how these things work, and they're basically like a, like a surgical representative that's there over your shoulder helping you. Wow. That doesn't eliminate your responsibility of, you should still read the instructions. But they didn't have that back then. So we, we, we did it all on our own, and um, the case went really well. So for the first arch we did, the first arch, it took about three hours to do that, that arch. So we took out all the teeth, we placed the bone foundation guide, we leveled the bone, placed the implants, and they did two prosthodontic pickups. Back then, one of the prosthodontic pickups was a clear duplication of the teeth, the temporary teeth, and the other one was the temporary teeth themselves. The clear duplication went in the box because that was your verified impression for your final prost workup. So it was a very clever way with an analog approach to have your, a final prost already ready to go, a final verified impression ready to go. And then they would wear that, the provisional teeth until they were done healing. Uh, now, uh, that's, that's changed. And uh, we have the unofficial world's record for the fastest full arch at 43 minutes. And that was uh, from gloves on to gloves off. And we took out all the teeth. We placed the bone foundation guide, leveled the bone, placed the implants, and screwed in the, the provisional uh, at 43 minutes. So really, really efficient. And it should be understood that I'm, I'm, I'm not bragging about my or my team's skills, what I'm saying is that we've honed the process. We've really, really worked very diligently over the years to come up with the implants made simple solution, the method. It's the method, and anyone can do it. If you, if you watch one of these cases, if you come and do an over the shoulder and you watch one of these cases or you come to the course, you'll see there's nothing complicated in what we're doing, nothing at all that's complicated, but it's an efficiency that we've developed over the years by purposefully looking after each case at our cases for opportunities for improvement, opportunities for uh, efficiencies. And then we implement those, we try them. And if they work, they stay. And if they don't, we move, we, we move on to the next one. And so we've got it very, very efficient. Now, typical, typical uh, single arches aren't 43 minutes. Typically they range about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes per arch. So when I say arch, an upper is an arch and a lower is an arch. So if you were doing two together, it might be two, two and a half hours to do the case. And that's pretty efficient. And that's that's relaxed, uh, taking your time, you know, just kind of cruising through and not having to think. It's a com almost like a autopilot, like when you drive to work, you know, you just get there and you didn't think about making the turns. So that's where we're at with the, with the solution now. But uh, in terms of what you can do as a new dentist getting into full mouth, once you're at that point uh, and you feel like you're, you've got the onesie twosies under your belt, you understand your, your guided kit 
You are very, very proficient with your guided kit. You know what the components are, you, and you're good with that. And it's time to move to full mouth. You're like, okay, I want to do full mouth. Doing it in this guided protocol, doing it with in sequence or th- uh, uh, S3 or any of the other you know uh, solutions that are out there, they're they're really, really amazing because they really help to keep you out of danger in terms of getting your implants in the right location. And getting your implants in the right location is going to make all of your prosthodontic work later so, so easy. And if you don't get those in the right location, then <laughs> when, you, when you get to it later, you know, you've got implants coming out the wrong spot, like out the facial of the teeth. This becomes a prosthodontic nightmare, right? You have to do all kinds of jumping through hoops at the end of the process to try to get it right. So doing one of these guided protocols, it facilitates the necessity to do a prosthodontic driven protocol. So you're going to start with the T first. Then you're going to say, where do I want my access holes? And you're going to want your access holes in the central developmental groove of posterior teeth or the cingulum of anterior teeth. So you say, okay, that's where I want them. And then you say, can I do that? And you put them in the virtual surgery and you say, yes, I can do it. You're, you're moving forward. And if you can't, move the implants. And if you can't move the implants, then you know you need to do a bone graft. But it becomes very, very systematic, very, very simple method that allows you to be very, very predictable. Uh, you, just, you just can see well in advance where you're going and you just, you just have these great outcomes. It sounds like, uh, so some advice for a, a dentist that might be doing this for the first time is uh, order well in advance. You want to work with an existing uh, solutions provider, such as in sequence, uh, do a prosthodontic driven protocol, do your digital plan, and then practice with the kit many times and uh, visualize your surgery many times to make sure that you have all of the skills and equipment that you need to get the job done right. And uh, maybe go with that over the shoulder, do an over the shoulder. I know you offer one of those surgeries and you were talking about the, the in-sequence rep can sometimes come out as well or NDX rep can come out as well. Is there anything else that I missed in that list? I, mean, I think you've got that really well covered, actually. You summarized that very well. I would say that uh, in terms of your efficiencies, it's very, very f- amazing. You might do the first case and the first arch might take you three hours, Okay. And the reason it might take you three hours to do the first arch that you do is because what you haven't figured out is how to pass components back and forth with your primary surgery assistant. And so what we're talking about, the efficiencies, they come very quickly. They come very quickly. Now, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it yourself, and you you will get faster over time with multiple surgeries uh, in terms of how do you hand the blockout straws back and forth. How do you insert the blockout? How do you retrieve the blockout straws? All of those little nuances. You can do that on your own, or you can do the -the over-the-shoulder training. And so the -the over-the-shoulder training is you would do a case, you would do the case, I would be right over your shoulder, and you're doing the case, and I give you all of the tips. <laughs> and so uh, it's something that I would have loved to have had back in the day. I would have absolutely signed up for and said, uh, yeah, uh, I'll do one case together, take this huge leap forward in terms of, of understanding all the nuances with the, the little nuances, literally how we pass those red straws cuts 20 minutes off your case easy per arch. And so learning those little, little nuances, you're going to get that from the overshows. You're, you're not likely going to get that from um, the NDX rep uh, because they're not there for that. In fact, a, a lot of times, uh, Dennis, you, you guys know we're, we have pretty big egos, okay? So d- dentists are known to have pretty big egos. They might not say it out loud, but inside they have pretty big egos. So when a, when a, when a representative comes to them from a company, um, many dentists will treat that representative as a representative. And so they don't look at them as an equal. So even if the rep has a lot of really good knowledge, uh, many times they get shut down by the dentist really early on. Like, you're just here to tell me what these components are, but don't give me any advice on how to pass the red straws, for instance. And that's unfortunate because if we were a little bit more open, many of these 
these trainers have literally been doing these cases for decades, right? And so they have a lot of good knowledge, but we bury them. We say, no, 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 don't give me any advice because it makes me look bad in front of my team members. Um, patient's asleep, so I don't care about that, but you're making me look bad, so don't do anything but tell me what these components are. And so there's an opportunity to, to get that from NDX uh, reps as well, or S3 reps, whoever you're using. But in, in, in the opportunity for over the shoulder, it's one-on-one. And not only is it one-on-one between uh, the clinician and myself on the surgery side, but the you bring your surgical assistant and my surgical assistant standing over their shoulder. So they're telling them, okay, they're going to need this next. Go ahead and cue this up. And so it's just a beautiful thing because remember, implants is a team sport. If you haven't heard that, it's, it's absolutely 100% true. Implants is a team sport. There's just no way to try to do this by yourself. Your head will literally pop off. It'll blow up with all the knowledge that you need to do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. So if you're out there listening to this and you're chuckling right now because you're trying to do it yourself, it's time to share the wealth. Okay, you need to bring somebody on your team that you that you rely on into the inner circle. Let them in. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Give them some responsibilities and share some of the some of the workload because it's just too much. Well, and you're talking about having that dual training where you're training the doctor over the shoulder and you have your assistant training their assistant. That's got to be super expensive, right? Like how much does that cost? <laughs> uh, you, you set me up here because the cost is it's free. And so uh, we think we have one of the best over the shoulder training courses in the country because it's free. And the way this works is once you once you've been trained, because you, you do need to go through the course first, because otherwise, if you don't go through the course, what will happen is we'll spend the entire time talking about the course <laughs> instead of doing the surgery. So you, you got to go through the course. It should make sense to you. You got to go through the course. But once you go through the course, you can do as many over the shoulders as you want. They're completely 100 percent free. All we do is charge our normal fee to the patient. And if you want to offset that fee by you know, reducing it or something like that, by compensating the, the patient a little bit, you can do that too. But there's no charge to the doctor. And we think it's the best you know, over-the-shoulder training that, that anyone offers in the country. And you can come as many times as you want. For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, there will be links to two of the -the over-the-shoulder trainings that we've done this past year uh, on screen now. And then if you're listening on your favorite podcatcher, it will be in the show notes. You can click on one of the links to see one of those. I highly recommend it. Um, I filmed those for the most part, and they're awesome. I feel like I could do one of these surgeries, and I am not a dentist. Thanks, Aaron. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, out.